Hi, my name is Steve Kinsley. I'm the Chief Wackadoo at Wackadoo Information Systems. Today we're talking import and export. We're wanting to get lots of data out of the system so that we can do something else with it, or we're preparing data that we got from somebody else and we want to bulk load this stuff all in. So we're going to talk about exporting data. We're going to look at what that file looks like. We're going to look at what we can do with that file to, to not have to do every column. Then we're going to do some imports and we'll see how import is an add operation. It does not verify that there's something in there that matches already. It just It's a blind add. Then at the end, we're going to talk about two situations or two aspects of the system that are either covered in another video or you just need to be aware of. Okay, so let's start. We're going to go export data. We're looking at the teacher list. We're in the teacher gifts application. We're on the teacher list page. And I'm going to hit export and bang, there it is. Now we're going to show that in the download folder. That's all it's doing is it's pulling it down there. As always, this is random data. These names are fake. Uh, they do not represent real schools, real people, or real anything. The name of this file that we just pulled down, Fictional Charity, is the name of our organization, our test organization. We pulled stuff down from the teachers page here and we did an export operation. That's the, that's what we're looking at here. Plus we have the timestamp of exactly when the system did this operation. That is a Greenwich Mean Time timestamp. Now, if I look at that file, it's gonna look like a mess. So let's take a look there. We're gonna look at that file later. Now, what we have in the first column is our resource type. That's always, in this case, teacher. That's the thing that we're importing or exporting. The second column happens, and column order is entirely irrelevant here. Hi, we're going to pause the video here for a second because there's something we forgot to put in. Case sensitivity on column names is vital. It's important that you match the case that you see on the screen, that you see in the export data file. The way that it's done here is what's necessary in order for the field to be lined up with what goes into the system. If you mess up the capitalization, it's not going to find the values. That's important. It's also important on that entity name out there on the first column, where in this case it says teacher with a lowercase t. So keep that in mind. Case sensitivity is key. We now return you to your regularly scheduled video. Thanks. The big thing is that the first column is resource type and that the uh, entity name is there. After that, you're on your own. You can pull in whatever you want to do. So teacher ID, in this case, you see one, two, three, four, five, and you think, oh, wait a minute, the columns don't line up very nicely. Why don't we pull this into a spreadsheet? Well, let's do that. And there's no reason that you can't do this that I won't explain about until the very end of our video. Okay, so we pull that data in, and there it is. We have now lined up the columns nicely, and we can see what this stuff is. So teacher ID, numeric values. This is your database lookup key um, uh, under the cover stuff. But teacher last name, teacher first name, teacher email. Now you're probably wondering, how do I know what columns I'm going to have if I'm not working on this particular thing? Well. It's pretty easy. Every application that we do that supports an export button, you can just hit that and go look and see <clears throat> excuse me, what those columns are. The other thing that you can do is you can click on one of these things and you will see if there, maybe you have a specially formatted page that tells you what the different fields are, but here they are. These are the fields that are available for a teacher. They're listed right there. And if you wanted to, you could look at the edit version of that. You're also going to get that same name inside as the placeholder um, for those fields. So that's how you determine what fields you have available. Now, as I look at that text file, or in this case, I'm looking at it in the spreadsheet, I notice that there's a lot of empty data. There's a lot of stuff here that I'm not actually doing. There are a couple of fields out here on the end that actually aren't part of the teacher. They're part of the school. Um, that happens occasionally on an export. It doesn't matter. If you have extra columns and you do an import, it just ignores them. It doesn't do anything with them. So um, it's actually quite useful when you're maintaining your data in another system and then you want to just pull it all in. 
So for example, let's watch this for a second. I now want to do an import operation. So I'm going to do an import and it's going to throw up this warning and it's going to tell me this is a bulk add. I'm going to do add on everything that I'm pulling in here. It's not going to replace existing items. So Violet Alexander is not going to get replaced by the one that I'm putting in. I'm going to get a new Violet Alexander. Just watch. It goes this quick. And I'm going to go desktop. There's desktop. And I'm going to load that in. And I just loaded 100 teachers without having to type them all at once. And yes, in fact, I have two Violet Andersons. Now, I don't, or Alexanders, I don't want to Violet Alexanders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear all my data. Again, this button's not available on every application on every page, but it is here. So I'm going to take advantage of it and demonstrate how quickly it works. <coughs> Now, in this case, it's going out and it's actually deleting the teachers and any GIFs that were associated with them. And I'm going to do another import and I'm going to pull that same file in. But now, because there's nothing in the database, I'm only going to have one of each. Great. There's my set of teachers. And you're thinking, wait a minute, I don't want to have to put in all of these columns. This is a pain. How do I? I don't want to tab out. I don't want to figure all that stuff out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up something smaller and I'm only going to put in those columns that I want to. So let me demonstrate what this looks like if I were to look at it in Excel. There we go. So there we go. There it is. I don't have all of my columns. I just have the stuff that I care about. That's it. This is what I have in my text file. Again, first column is important because that tells me what the entity is. But then I've got my other column names. I don't even have all of them. I don't care. And I don't care about the order. I really don't care about that stuff. As long as that first column tells me what it is that I'm doing, it's going to create one with the information that I need here. So let's close that down. And we're going to do an import on my data file. Now, again, it doesn't matter what the name of the file is. It's the format and the content that matters. But I conveniently named them Aardvark and Acme so that we could see them at the top of our list. OK, so you get the idea. We have done an export. We have done an import, a couple of different imports. We've cleared all of our data. We've looked at the full export data format. We've looked at a partial export data format. It doesn't matter whether you have all the columns. It doesn't matter what order the columns are in as long as that first one indicates the name of the entity as shown in this export format. Now, there are a couple of other situations and this is covered. What I'm about to talk about is covered in more detail in a separate video on import templates. Now, if you look at the import button, you'll see that it's just an import button and you get this message telling you that you're going to do a bunch of ads. If you look at the GIFs tab in this application, you're going to see the import button has a little drop up on it. And it's going to list a number of different file formats. The file format that we're talking about right now is what we're calling export format. It's the one that you get when you hit the export button or some subset of it. And that's what we're talking about today. There is another video that talks about import templates and how they're used, how they're defined and what they do. But in short, the export format is a format that we support. It's our data loading and importing and exporting format. Import templates allow you to pull data from some format that you don't have control over into the system in bulk. And different applications have different places where this is applied. And it's only in specialized cases where you get to do this. But when you, for example, need to bulk load, uh, in this case, teacher gift information from the external website's report that gave you the, the payments and the donations that the parents made for the teachers, that report comes in. Then we have to use these import templates because we don't have control over that format. Import templates are a very powerful tool for importing formatted data that you don't control the format of. Now, 
I'm going to talk about one more thing that is fairly dangerous. So we're going to go back to the teachers page to do this. Now, if I do an export, I'm going to pull this file up. I'm going to open this file. The first thing you notice is that my, well, maybe not the first thing you notice, but something that you should notice is that the teacher IDs do not fit nicely in just a couple of characters. And what I want to do is warn you about pulling this into a spreadsheet. And the reason I say that is the following. I'm going to cut and paste this stuff and I'm just going to drop it into the spreadsheet. And you have to look at this teacher ID column. And if I format that teacher ID column to be a whole number, I don't actually want that. I don't want, come on guys, I don't want periods, I don't want anything. See, this is, this is the problem that you're going to run into, is I want a number, and I don't want thousand separators, and I want this, and I want zero. Okay, so you start to see some of the things that go on. This is a big, big, big stinking number. Take a look at the end of it. This ends in 400. This is Caroline Schultz. Look at the end of Caroline Schultz in the text file up here. Caroline Schultz ends in 408. So just by cutting and pasting that value from the text file into the spreadsheet, the spreadsheet truncated the data. Let me say that again. The spreadsheet truncated the data. You lost accuracy on your data. You corrupted your database when you cut and paste ID values into a spreadsheet. Okay? Now, it's possible if you're careful to work around and do it in the text file. You can do uh, you, global changes and things like that. However, make sure that if you have ID values in columns in your import-export data, that you are not truncating it in the spreadsheet. You can't do it because Microsoft Excel doesn't support whole numbers that large and neither does Google Sheets. So if you cut and paste into those things, you're going to lose accuracy on your data. Word of the wise, don't do it. Go in the text file. Now, the interesting thing is when you're actually importing, you're doing an add and so it's ignoring that. The place where this comes into play is here in the school ID column because they're not going to be small numbers like this. They're going to be big numbers like that. Okay? So that's why it's a little difficult to go in there and do that. So what we would do and what we did, frankly, was we set it up so that we had the school name out here on the right and it was possible to do a global insert and change in the text file um, for the teachers. We made it convenient for doing that in the text file. So something to be aware of. Be very careful when you're cutting and pasting IDs into Excel from an export file. You can't do it. So that's pretty much uh, everything that we wanted to talk about for import and export. Uh, we exported a file. We looked at what the columns were. We looked at the, the data that was in there. Um, we did imports. We showed that that was an add. We showed that we didn't need all of the columns. Uh, we didn't get into the data formats and things. Um, date formats are typically the ones that are the most difficult to handle, um, but we recognize most common date formats. Um, the native one is that JSON format that's a full uh, GMT uh, time stamp. Um, and we looked at import templates, which allow us to, or we mentioned them, I should say, we didn't look at them. There's another video that talks about them at length. But we talked about import templates and how they support importing data from other file formats. And finally, I know we just talked about it, but you need to not truncate ID values going in and out of Excel. You will corrupt your database if you do that wrong.
Um, if you find yourself in a situation where you need to do that, give us a call. We're happy to talk through that process with you or to, to help you do the kind of things that you need to do, especially if you're in a charitable or a ministry type situation where you might not have somebody with the technical skills available to you or the budget to hire somebody. Thank you again for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments about import and export or anything else from Wackadoo, please feel free to reach out to us as shown on the Contact Us page at wackadoo.info or wackadoo.org. Thank you.